Right before we begin our discussions, let's quickly tell you this report just in that the Nigerian Football Federation has appointed Finidi George as the new Super Eagles coach. Well, let's get right down to today's discussion where we'll begin with the issue of fuel scarcity, which appears to be worsening. Now, more worrisome is the fact that the crisis may persist a little longer. As a public relations officer of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Chinedu Ukadike, said the product is not available in the country because most refineries in Europe are undergoing turnaround maintenance, making it difficult for marketers to get the product. And amid the binding nationwide scarcity, depots in the country are diverting petrol to Abuja. It seems Nigeria will wait for Dangote and Port Harcourt refineries to begin local production to get a reprieve. But first, let's take this report by our correspondent, Ayomide Ajibwe. The queues are back. Nigerians are struggling to get fuel. While some are selling, others are not. The cause of this scarcity is unknown to many Nigerians. Some say the petroleum marketers are expecting a hike on fuel price. Others say there is a possibility for a downward review of prices. I think maybe it's because probably they said they want to increase foil price. So some people may actually want to quickly use that, take advantage of it by making excess money, you know. Some person was suggesting that probably was because they are anticipating the drop in the fair price and the filling stations having some uh, commodity with them. They want to sell at higher prices before they begin the, I mean, to sell the, uh, I mean, the cheaper uh, rates. Those who are unable to get fuel in their cars are taking the unconventional route of black market, selling as much as 5,000 naira for five liters. What we gathered here was that earlier when they were selling, they were selling to kegs as priority. So they collect 1,000 naira from those who bring in kegs and they sell to them. So they can, they can sell for like 30 kegs in a row before they attend to vehicles. On the camera, you can see some of the staff of the mobile filling station are there. They are no longer selling. They just decided to or hold back the fuel, and the fuel is there. They are not selling to, to customers. So a lot of people are apprehensive here. They are angry, they are agitated. Someone said he has been here since 5 o'clock in the morning. So we wonder what is going to happen. We were told the task force were here earlier to ensure that people were selling fuel. But then, immediately they left, things went back to status quo. That is the reality of Lagosians today. This woman, a commercial driver, is a mother of five and the breadwinner of her family. She's angry and frustrated because she has been on the queue for more than four hours and has no clue whether she will get fuel or not. Been here since four hours ago now. They are not selling fuel. They are selling keg. They will stop after one hour they sell keg. They don't attend to cars. We are just wait, waiting. Commercial drivers are taking advantage of the situation to act fierce, and one can only hope the situation will abate in the coming days. Ayomedia J, TVC News, Lagos. Well, let's get more perspective on this crucial issue as a correspondent, a business editor. Tulupe Ugunjobi is in the house to give his thoughts on this. Tulupe, you know, people are asking why this fuel scarcity? We've heard Ipman saying the refineries in Europe are having some turnaround maintenance and perhaps it might linger for about two weeks. But you are in the energy sector, <laughs> I would say. So just let us understand what exactly is happening. Well, it, it's sad. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. It's been a while. Uh, it's sad that we are back to this um, situation of scarcity again because it's becoming, it's been back and forth. And um, one thing I've noticed with regards to this is anytime there's a challenge with logistics and there is any delay for the product getting to the depots and before it gets to the tankers and all of that, once there is a disruption for, say, two, three days, you expect that queue or scarcity to last for like a week or more. That's just the truth. Because once there is that um, disruption in the supply chain, then there is a problem. That is what has happened now. The NNPC says 
there are issues with refining, delay, vessels going to pick up um, supplies. Because I spoke to someone in Moment today, and he said they have supplies on the sea, but there are no little vessels to go convey them to the depots. Because some of those depots cannot birth at some of um, Some of the vessels cannot birth at our depots. Right. So they need they are bigger than, I think, the space and all of that. Those are technicalities. So I think we need little smaller vessels that go to now get the product to the depot point. I think there's been a disruption around that point, and that has not been uh, addressed. The fallout is that, um, uh, going back to the PIA, we thought that this, had, this would be a forgotten story. Since now, NAPC, sole importer, like we always say, though many people will still argue that they don't believe that is 100%. But we thought this, was going to, this was going, wasn't going to be the story. But that is what is still happening. We have issues with speculations around pricing. We have issues with our refineries not working. So all of this comes together to hit us as humans. Now, Lagos is, remains the only point of loading, which I've always said on this platform and other platforms that it is not a way we... It's not something we can, we can uh, sustain. Right. That's it. We have more than 20 depots, local depots around the country. <coughs> pipelines are linked to them, but they are not functional. Oh. The security of these pipelines is not supposed to be Toulouse issue or a journal. It should be government's responsibility. Why do you have to come from Meduguri to it's load Lagos. fuel in Lagos? I went to Mautu area yesterday. That's where my church is. And I can tell you of what I saw on that road. The queue, the long lines of trucks waiting to get into the depots. So it's a multifaceted challenge. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is just, it has a lot of angles to look at. And when you look at this, when you really want to break this down critically. Mm. So I think a decision has to be taken. If we're importing, what quantity are we importing? How are these products getting to the depots? Mm. How are we housing these products? Mm. How are we disposing these products to the tankers to move to various spots? Those are the questions that I think need to be answered. Because we keep on saying we have enough products at the depots, they're going to last us for one month, two months, but we don't have these, these products at the filling station. Look at the story by my colleague, and you will see for real that there is a problem. So in some cases, they're selling for above 1,000. They are adulterated petroleum products all across the country now, which makes it worse. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an issue that really, really needs to be addressed before we now start to talk about what happens with Dangote or Potakot. We don't know. We've not heard certainly from Dangote. We heard June, July. But we've not heard anything. There's no statement to that effect that I know of that we say we are sure of starting PMS sales by June or by July. We've not seen that. So if we are still importing, I think the agency in charge should make sure we have enough that meets up with the demand despite the removal of subsidy and the, um, the quantity of PMS that is said that we consume every day by the NUPRC or any other agency. So with that in mind, apologies BKO, I know I'm supposed to come to you. <laughs> with that in mind, because people are also speculating, are we likely to see scale of, I mean, the sale of PMS going as high as 1,000 Naira or we might have a revert, even if at all there is an assurance that uh, PMS could, you know, uh, the scarcity rather could ease out in the next 48 hours. Do you think we can go back to the same price of five? Obviously, I think we will. We will. We will. We will because the NNPC is still bringing in the product. So, but the challenge is from the depot end to the distribution end. I have an Ipman uh, stakeholder in the, in the that's Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria who told me that he bought PMS at 645 naira at a depot. And two days after, he went for a reload and he bought for 666 Naira. I spoke with him earlier again today. It's about 670 something Naira. So if I move it from the depot at 670, I'm going to pay for diesel to move it to the station where you're going to sell. Then you're still going to run other logistics. So at the end of the day, it's going to sell for maybe above 700 Naira. So the NPC must make sure the depot owners get at the appropriate price and sell. Though they cannot <coughs> disrupt mm. because the market has been liberalized. Mm. BK, what's your thoughts on this? Because, you know, we thought that perhaps we would not be having to sing this song again of fuel scarcity. And from the analysis given to us by Tudlope, a lot of issues are on ground if we're to talk about bye-bye to fuel scarcity. You know, I said uh, yesterday, on this program, I said that one of uh, my biggest regrets 
is the fact that we have an NMPCL that is not known for transparency. They never come clean to Nigerians on anything, whether it's on, uh, on the quantum of petrol that we consume on a daily basis, they do not come clean. And when there is crisis and they need to address the problem, or even let us realize that this is a problem, but we are dealing with it. They never, ever come clean. Mm. I recalled when uh, Ibe Kachiku was um, uh, GMD. 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 And then as a Minister of State um, for Petroleum Resources, we had fuel scarcity that lasted months in 2016 and 2017. NMPC kept telling us that there was no supply mm. until the uh, Secretary of Moman came to the um, uh, public hearing by the Senate and said, see, from the record that we have, supply had tapered down for months. So if supply tapered down for months and Nigerians were in the season when they use petrol the most, that mm. is around December, what did you expect? They didn't confess to us. When they were unilaterally paying for subsidy without money appropriated for subsidy, they also didn't come clean to us Ibi Kachuku and others kept calling subsidy payments on that recovery mm. and all kinds of funny names. Uh, names. So we are hearing now from other people in the sector mm. that supply has gone down because some of the refineries that used to supply us well are doing their turnaround maintenance. Yesterday on this program, I said, I do not believe that we have enough. Because if you have enough, what will anybody gain by simply hoarding? hoarding? You can only hoard in a season of insufficiency. Right. This is the basic logic. But we've been fed a diet of lies over the years by NMPC, and it makes no sense. Come clean to Nigerians for God's sake. Let us know that, okay, this is the problem. It's a problem you are addressing. It's going to take this length of time right. and we'll be fine. Come clean to us as a people. Right. Respect us. If you cannot come clean to Nigerians, it shows that you have no regard for them. It's as simple as that. How do you watch people suffer the way they are suffering now? Some people are selling petrol at up to 2,000, 2,000. 2,200 mm. naira per litre. Yeah. Why should Nigerians be subjected to unbearable pain? Mm. Okay, did they not know if these guys were forward-looking, if they are not simply reactive in nature, didn't they anticipate the supply hiccups yes. that we now have? Mm. Some people are simply not doing their work. And if people are not doing their work, it makes sense to show them the door. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's not a family business. Running Nigeria is not a family business. If you cannot do the job that you've been given, then they have to, uh, to, 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 to bounce you. It's as simple as that. Oh. Now we are hearing stories that, oh, uh, uh, hundreds of trucks have been directed to move in the direction of Abuja because they knew the president traveled and the president does not want to see long queues as he's coming into the country. Mm. You are not going to drop him with a chopper into Asuro. <laughs> he's going to have to drive too. And he will see long queues or filling stations without fuel at all. Mm. The president will see what you are trying to hide. Oh, even if you saturate Abuja with, with fuel, how about Lagos? How about Kano? Mm. So if you have a problem, you have supply hiccups. You cannot mask it. It will, be, it will be as apparent as daylight to, to everyone. I was saying, address this problem. If the refineries were working, would we even need, if we are not a, 
uh, shameless uh, country, would we be going to help the economy of some other countries mm. to, yes. to mm -hmm. by patronizing mm. their refineries? Yeah. Mm. When we have refineries here, we didn't build new refineries. Angola, that overtook us as uh, Africa's uh, uh, biggest uh, oil producer. Angola built a, a brand new refinery with a, a, a BOT uh, uh, agreement. So it can be done. But for years, we just didn't bother because we were happy simply to import and steal money through importation. For more than 20 years, we've been grappling with this problem. Really mm. sad. You know, when I think about this each situation, you've hit the nail on the head. Our refineries are not working. If at all what's working, we wouldn't be where we are today. Tolu, we understand our economy is largely import-driven, mm. and yes. this shows the level at which our economy Why has gotten to this point. Why should we be import-driven uh, on, um, on petrol mm. when we are among the seven biggest producers in of the world? Oil. Why? It's no, there's no reason in the world for us not to have refineries that are functioning. Mm. In some countries, you have maybe like six refineries dedicated to export, another six dedicated yeah, for local, local, local consumption. Local. That's what True. they are doing in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, True. in Venezuela. Mm. So mm. we, we look at how many refineries since, since before independence. We've, we've not managed to add, apart from uh, uh, Kaduna, that we added in uh, 1980. Mm. And the second uh, 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 Portaco refinery, which new ones have we built? So, Lou, what's the long term solution in this? Even though we are looking for short term, short -term yeah. solution, what is a long term solution so that we do not have to experience this kind of situation again? You see, I, I, I think that um, the um, administration of President Bolatinumbo has shown sincerity in fixing these refineries. And I'm being very objective here. This is the government that has really come out to say, let's get this let's put this let's put a stop or let's try to reduce drastically importation right and that is really the way to go 1.5 billion dollars was invested in the portacourt refinery that money was given by afdb and they didn't dash us that money that's one thing i want nigerians to know yeah it's not the regular uh, turnaround that we used to do before now that they keep turning around and nothing turns but this time around, something must turn because, yes, you must, must, must do 360, 360 degrees. Right? Yes, so something must turn around. And according to information, and this is direct information, right? what is left to put court is there's a document that should be issued from, I think, an international agency that has to do with maybe cracking and all of those things they do, the technicalities in it. If we don't get those documents and we start to produce and anything happens at the refinery site, I think the NPC will be held responsible. Mm. And I think part of it's just like the NCAA when you want to check airlines, check aircraft and all of that. Yes, my guy will say that this would have been done earlier. <laughs> but I think that out of four, I think they've done two. So I think they have two more to go. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I hear is delaying Potter Court. And if that is fixed, I think uh, because all the lines are working, all of uh, other things that are for Potter Court, I think they are good to go. So if they get that documentation, we don't know how soon that will happen. Dangote has also started doing aviation and diesel we see that in partnership with mrs diesel is selling for a thousand fifty nine in some cases private owners are complaining because they cannot get yes uh -huh. i know yes, i wanted to buy it uh -huh. it's not, still one for me one three two hundred what does not two is even getting better it's getting, uh, it's yes. getting better but that is it the farther you go yes uh, in our country <laughs> yeah of course the more expensive, <laughs> the more expensive it gets. so you see so if we start to see that kind of relief in just how many months i started doing diesel and aviation fuel. Mm -hmm. Airline prices, you see air tickets are kind of dropping because airlines can also get um, the, cheaper. The, the, the cheaper. So if we now get, and he can do same to PMS, the government can give crude reasonably. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we will soon be done with our swap thing, the swap plan. So if all of that is done, I think we should be able to reduce importation. Let me be, let me be a little bit um, uh, conservative. Modest. Let's say 50%, right. 60%. If we do that, the impact on our FX, we would all see it. Mm. That's the truth. So the only way to go, there is no way to cut corners. The refineries must be functional. They must produce right. at least to a level that can help bridge the gap. Supply and we gap. must also reduce this dependency on coming to Lagos to load. I'll keep yes. saying that. Mm. The, if, look at what happened in Rivers. You know, you were talking say, about the, some of those um, depots. Yes. I think the moment private individuals come in, depots, mm. they, they disregarded <laughs> a lot of those depots. 
Look at Ore, for example. Mm. Ore has not functioned for years. Yes. And it's there. It's mm. there. In facility, they've not used it for many it's years. There. You just hear yeah, Ore. You know, I was discovering someone and someone said, but we have Ore now. He did not know that Ore had not been used for more than 10 years. Mm. We have Mosimi, yes, they're using mm -hmm. Mosimi. But there are those depots built. Buhari, as a, a military uh, ruler, built many. He didn't build any refinery. Some people uh, deceive themselves that he was the one who built uh, one of those refineries. He didn't build any refinery, but he built depots mm. in big cities. Buhari built depots. But again, if you try to send petroleum products through the pipelines <laughs> to those depots. Problem. The boys are waiting. Yes, One day, NNPC sent word out that they are going to uh, send uh, petrol through pipelines. They started with water. <laughs> they breached the pipelines in more than 100 points yes. because they thought that petrol was coming. So, now, if we had dug the pipelines uh, beneath, yes, we were buried them very deep in the ground. Some of these problems won't be happening. Absolutely. But a lot of the pipelines are accessible. Even in uh, Niger Delta, you, um, see, you see some on the Behind surface you. of the yes. earth. Mm. Children will be running on top of them. Mm. So they can always break them. The same way they break gas pipelines, believing that it is petrol that is inside. You know, and then deny our power plant access to gas. Because power stations are located, in some cases, far away from the source of gas. Right. So we have all kinds of problems that need to be addressed. Indeed. But we need to stop importation of All right, that's where we have to leave it for now. We need to go on a very quick break. We have more discussions coming up on Journalist Hangout. <laughs>